Disney friends, welcome back to another video here on my channel. So this video that you're watching is actually kind of exciting. Um, okay, the video itself is not exciting, but it's an exciting day in the history of the channel. Um, this week was actually marks the one year anniversary of It's a Disney Kind of Day being a channel. This time a year ago, I had uploaded the first triple vlog for my solo trip last January. So yay thank you for sticking around with me for a year i had originally hoped to do a montage video kind of like a, just a quick sort of thing through the january trip just something quick and easy but unfortunately i had a little issue with some of the old video clips and wasn't able to do that i was missing a few clips and things got weird and with my computer and transferring some stuff so I ended up deciding to just make another Disney planning tips video for you guys, but I did want to mention that today, or I don't know if it was today or if it was just this week, but this week is officially one year of It's a Disney Kind of Day, which is just crazy. I can't believe it's been a year since I was in Florida, since I went on my first solo trip. It is crazy, and thank you guys so much for hanging out and sticking around, and I hope you found some of these videos with the dining plan helpful. I know they're not always the most entertaining to watch necessarily, but I hope they're helpful to you in planning your trips and you learn something from them. <laughs> okay, so today's topic is back to dining again. And more specifically, should I get the Disney dining plan? When I'm talking to people who are going to Disney for the first time, for the seventh millionth time, I think the most common question I've seen asked on different fan sites and things like that or if someone does reach out to me is the dining plan. So I'm going to get to provide a little bit of a different perspective on this today just because I have used it both as a solo traveler and as a family like I've used it with my parents before. So. Basically, my goal here is to just kind of give you guys some background information on the dining plan and help you make the decision of whether it's right for you. Because as every video I make as far as Disney trip planning will probably start, it is a personal choice. What works for me may not work for you. What worked for my family may not work for yours. What works for you and your friends may not be what works for me and mine. So, and every trip is different too. I've done dining plan several different ways at this point and I still feel like I haven't quite figured out what works for me and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more towards the end of the video but let's get the information stuff out of the way first. So there are three levels of Disney dining plan that are offered. There's the quick service level which, which, which is two quick service meals a day and then two snacks a day and you get your resort refillable mug. Every plan has two snacks a day and or as you say snacks at night. Disney dining plan is per night um, that you stay on property. You do have to be staying on property to do the dining plan. You can't stay off site and take advantage of it. So that is also something to consider and we'll talk a little bit more about on property versus off property in a later video. But so that's the basics of like the underlying thing but the quick service meal plan is two quick service meals a day and then two snacks and basically a quick service meal if you don't aren't familiar with how Disney classifies their meals is more of I call it a food court style you're not getting food, food court food at Disney but it's more that style you walk up to a counter you order it you go find your table you sit down some of them now are starting to switch to a little bit more of like a mix of like ordering and waiting for your food and getting it and sitting down versus like be our guest. That line is a little gray there. Um, guys are point at Wilderness Lodge. The quick service line is a little gray there. But generally that's how it'll work. You'll walk up to a counter, order your food, um, and then walk to your seat and eat. <laughs> Uh, so it's not, no, there's no waiters that like come to your table or anything like that. Um, none of the quick service meals are character meals. 
So those are some things to consider, but that's what you get. It is the lowest tier of the dining plan is the quick service plan. But, you know, for some people that works. So then at the next level up is the, what we call in, what Disney people call, um, it's the regular Disney dining plan. And that one includes one table service meal, one quick service meal, two snacks, and then you resort for refillable mugs. So, and that's per night. So if you stay for nine nights, then you get nine table service meals, nine quick service meals, and 18 snacks. So that is usually what most people I think fits them best. A mix of the two of quick service meals and table service meals. Um, you are locked in though, like you have to use your table service credits for table service, you have to use your quick service credits for quick service. Um, quick service credits that you have left over at the end can be converted into snacks. I think you get three snacks per quick service. I don't think that's changed this year. Um, if you have any quick service credits left over, you can do that. I met a family on my last trip down there that I was getting on the bus to go back to Magic Kingdom for a night after I had come home, or maybe it was Epcot, I think it was Epcot, they were getting off the bus from Magic Kingdom, and they just had this giant bag, I mean like giant, like Disney store bag, full of snacks, and they're like, and there was four of them, and they easily probably, I'm like, did you guys eat at all, like, on your trip, like, they had so many snacks left over, uh, or so many quick service meals left over that they just, like, loaded up, and I'm, like, convinced they pretty much didn't eat anything for their entire trip, but, which is very impressive, honestly. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so you can do that if you have uh, credits left over because the credits are non-refundable. So if you don't use them, you lose them. So if you have quick service left over, then you might as well get some snacks for it. And like I have, I should have pulled it out before I filmed this, but every year I go, I get one, at least one Mickey or Disney Rice Krispie treat to bring home, and I will save it until I'm ready to go on my next trip. So usually like the month of the trip or the month before, I will finally eat the last Rice Krispie treat. Um, I used to get, they used to have like Mickey shaped pasta that you could get two a Mickey shaped mac and cheese. And I used to get one of each. I used to get a pasta and a mac and cheese. And I'd eat one like not long after I came home, like when I first got the first little bit of like post Disney depression, if you will, <laughs> or post trip blues or whatever. And I'd pull one out and eat it, and then I'd save the other one, usually the mac and cheese. <laughs> and then I'd save the other one, like just the pasta, for right before I went on my next trip. So I still have a Rice Krispie Treat from my last trip last January that I have not eaten yet. And I will eat it just around the time that I leave for my next trip. It's like my own little tradition. Because like they're Rice Krispie Treats, they don't really get bad. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so... That's my little own little snacky tradition, but basically that's the deal of the regular dining plan. And then the deluxe dining plan, which is the most expensive option, but it is three meals a day that you can use between quick service, table service, um, any way you want. There's no designation to them. There's no like you have to use this credit for a table service, you have to use this credit for a quick service. You can just use it whatever you whatever you want. And however you want and you also get the two snacks and the refillable mug and something to note if you haven't been to Disney in a while is that as of 2019 I believe it started in 2019 it may have started in 2018 but fairly sure it was 2019 uh, you can get an alcoholic beverage if you're over 21 when you're on your trip at any I think any of your meals now come with an alcoholic beverage entitlement if you're of age so, or a specialty beverage if you're not, or if you're like me and you just don't really drink, you can get like a milkshake or something too instead of like soda. I think it used to just be like soda, water, juice, coffee that you could pick from. Now you could get like a milkshake or something as your drink rather than your dessert. Um, table service meals are all entree dessert. If you're on the deluxe dining plan, table service meal also includes an appetizer and a drink. Um, and quick service meals are an entree and a drink. Table service can also be a, a buffet. So that's pretty like quick overview of the dining plan. I'm not sharing prices just because I know people are going to watch this video like 
probably like eight years from now or something crazy and the prices are going to be all different and they're probably about to change anyway because we're getting closer to the 2021 um, package rates coming out in just a couple months so I don't want to share the prices or anything like that uh, specifically but you can find that all on the Disney website and there's tons of other resources out there for you as far as pricing goes as long as you google um, Disney Dining Plan and then you'll get the most up-to-date information too so if you are watching this in 2024 or something crazy uh, everything could be different maybe there's not even a dining plan anymore who knows um, but I just wanted to throw that out there so the biggest thing you have to take into consideration when you're getting ready to figure out if the dining plan is right for you or your family because um, remember like I said every trip is different every family is different every person is different you have to decide what's important to you the dining plan is lovely for convenience. You've basically prepaid for all of the food that you're going to eat while you're down there. Um, drinks too. Drinks count as a snack credit. There's some debate whether or not they're worth using a credit on. And that's kind of where this comes in. You have to decide is the value more important or the convenience more important to you. Typically in the past, I've always gone for the convenience factor. Like, just give me the dining plan and then I know like all my food's pretty much taken care of and I don't have to worry about it. Um, but the truth is that generally, especially as a solo traveler or a traveler with a small family, because when we did travel as a family it was just my parents and myself, so we were a small family, um, the value can be lacking. A lot of times you don't quite get the full value and that's mostly because like Disney is the prices of your meals are all different so Disney needs to think about like basically has to assume that every person who has a dining plan is going to order the most expensive thing on the menu and if you're the type of person who's going to look at that and say because I know I'm paying for the most expensive thing on the menu I feel like I need to order the most expensive thing on the menu even if it's not what I want the dining plan may not be for you um but if you're the type of person like me who's like this is a load off my mind to not have to pay for this for the meals you know like I can just scam a magic band and I know they're already paid for and I can get whatever I want I don't have to worry about how expensive it is you know if you're, if you're more like that which is a little bit more how I am then you know it may be a good choice for you. I do generally lose money by getting, it's like bottom line, I do generally lose a little bit by getting the dining plan. I don't necessarily, and like I wouldn't order as much, like I probably wouldn't get a dessert most places if I wasn't on the dining plan, but like it's Disney and I kind of like getting the desserts, but honestly I probably wouldn't get one if I was just paying out of pocket. But I like them, so that's an advantage to the dining plan, is it's kind of like, oh, well, I already paid for this dessert, so I might as well get it anyway, <laughs> right? Um, so, and same thing with, like, the deluxe dining plan, like an appetizer. I would be more likely to order an appetizer than a dessert on my own, probably, but still probably wouldn't necessarily, so, especially if it was just me and I wasn't with somebody else. So, that kind of, you know, lets me try different things a little bit and not feel as guilty about it I guess um but yeah so basically it comes down to value versus convenience and what is important to you is it more important to have the load off your mind of okay everything's paid for I just have to scan my magic band and be on my way or am I more concerned with making sure I get the most bang for my buck in which case it may make more sense to to, to uh, skip the dining plan so Again, because like I said, it's a personal choice, I'm going to share my personal thoughts on the dining plan and why I do, why I don't, um, or why I do, when I might not, and some of my experiences with some of the different levels of dining plan. So again, this is all just my personal opinion. What works for me may not work for you, but at least you have someone's personal experience. And I know I had a hard time when I was researching my last solo trip, finding information like coming specifically from someone who had traveled solo or was traveling solo. So I'm hoping this may help some of you who maybe are also considering solo trips coming up decide if this is the right choice for you. So, like I said, 
almost every time I've gotten the dieting plan, I have technically lost a little bit of money wise. Um, it's been a little more expensive than what I would typically spend if I was just on my own. But like I said, I also get more with the dining plan than I would on my own. So I have personal experience with both the regular Disney dining plan and the deluxe Disney dining plan. And at the end of the day, this I wish there was a third level almost. <laughs> like, um, I am relatively a th eat three times a day person for the most part. Um, I have been known to skip meals here or there, but so a lot of times to me the deluxe dining plan sounds the best because I really like to start my day with a nice chill table service breakfast and then I'll usually do something quick servicey for lunch because um, I'm usually in the middle of something. And then some nights I'll do a table service dinner, some nights I'll do a quick service dinner kind of depending on what's on tap for the evening or the day or maybe there's just a restaurant I want to try or something like that. So basically that's kind of how my day goes. I also really like, um, so the Disney dining plan it only kind of works for me. Um, I usually will use, because that's what I'm doing, or that's what I did to the let, no, hold on. In January, I did the deluxe Disney dining plan. The two trips before that in 2013 and 2017, I had the regular Disney dining plan. When 2013, 2017, I went with my mom and dad. So, basically, those two trips were a little different too because there were other people involved. Uh, so I had to take other people what other people wanted into consideration as well. And they and there were several meals where like we you know we paid out of pocket for them or whatever and didn't use our credits you know we kind of figured out where the best use of them is and that's kind of something you have to do with the regular dining plan is because you don't really get enough credits to cover your entire day if you do typically eat three meals a day um you, ha you have to kind of mix and match and figure out where to best spend your credits and stuff and on a whim kind of as a splurge on my last trip I decided to go deluxe for the dining plan because I wanted to give it a try and I liked the idea of not necessarily being stuck with one table service credit one quick service credit like I liked the idea of being flexible about it I wish I would have taken more advantage about of that honestly so basically the if you're a signature dining person which I'm not the deluxe plan is great because you have more credits to you so you can do some of those two credit meals. The only two credit meal I wanted to do was Cinderella, Cinderella's Royal Table, which I did, and it was great, but not something I feel the need to do again, do it in a couple years again, maybe. Um, but not something I'm like bouncing off the ceiling to do again. So basically I did that was basically the reason for getting the deluxe dining plan was so that I could have the opportunity to do that one and not feel weird about spending two credits because I knew I had them to spend um I will say at the end of I think the most credits I've ever had left over at the end of a trip ever I was gonna say just at the end of the last trip but I had three quick three credits left over at the end of last trip and half of that was because I got sick, so I didn't eat for a couple of days. Um, I shouldn't say that. I ate, but I just wasn't feeling good, so I didn't necessarily leave my room to go get food. So, if I had been feeling, because I know I, I skipped dinner one night because I didn't feel good, and then I skipped one, lunch one day because I didn't feel good, and then I was supposed to have one credit left over for breakfast the last day. Um, so that's how I ended up with, so I really only had two credits left over, and I think that's really... The most I've ever had. And I think only once did I leave, like, full on, like, leave one credit behind because I didn't trade it in for snacks. So, for the most part, I haven't had an issue making sure I use my meal credits and stuff like that. But I know that can be for some people. Um, they can be a little nervous about making sure they use their credits. So, that's something to consider. But like I said, I, um... 
it hasn't been an issue for me in my personal experience but I my personal opinion is the best dining plan is actually the deluxe dining plan um it is a lot of food I will admit that it is very expensive which is not fun <laughs> but I really liked the flexibility of it now I also went in January which meant that there were a million and five open table service reservations every night and I didn't take advantage of this the way I should have because there were definitely nights where it was like I don't really want quick service tonight or um, Epcot and Hollywood Studios are two struggle parks for me as far as food goes generally um, there's an, I don't love a lot of their quick service options in either park so it's kind of like I'm a little more drawn to the table service restaurants in that area and I've really discovered through last trip that I actually generally prefer the table service restaurants to the quick service restaurants so the deluxe dining plan kind of works for me in that way even though I don't do the signature dining um, restaurants typically but I, I do prefer generally the table service restaurants to the quick service restaurants so the deluxe dining plan is nice because again there's no title or uh, credit lines there's no like this is a quick service credit this is a table service credit so if I wanted to do a quick service I could if I wanted to do table service I could if I could get it in a uh, reservation at the last minute and I really liked that um, but again I don't know if that would be as successful of something to consider if you're going at a more busy time um, or maybe even something more to consider because you could get in a last minute reservation to somewhere that you weren't anticipating so that's you know that's a consideration with the deluxe plan and probably what kind of pushes it towards my favorite is that um, it's all <laughs> table service if I want to use it that way uh, this trip I you know I have several table service sorry about that I had to take care of my puppy really quick so basically yeah I, I don't know what else to say honestly at this point that was just my experience with the dining plans and stuff like I've never really had a bad experience with it but I have a trip um, planned for 2021 right now and that trip I am considering going dining plan list um, just because like I said I've kind of figured out that I am a table service diner and I don't know if I can justify doing the deluxe plan again but we'll just have to see what happens in June when packages come out um, but we will see what happens and how expensive everything is and sort that all out when we get there in June. And yeah, that's that's all I got. Um, really, you know, and maybe it's a thing where you kind of go with like just the regular dining plan kind of like we did um, to try and figure it out. And then once you figure out what you like, you can decide if it's worth it to go to deluxe or not or to go no dining plan. Um, and it is different when you're solo. It's a lot harder to make the dining plan make sense when you're solo. Of course, now also the character meal prices all just went up. So I should really go back and do the math. I may not be losing as much as I normally do because I do tend to do a lot of character meals. So there's that. Um, I don't, that's really all I have on the dining plan. If you have more questions, please leave them in the comments below. Or you can reach out to me on Instagram or something and I'll be happy to answer them. Or if I get enough of them, who knows, maybe I'll do a follow-up video and talk about a little bit more about the dining plan if there's anything major that I missed. So, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. And I will see you all soon and have a Disney day. So after you just watch this last video <clears throat> and listen to me talk about how there wasn't a perfect dining plan in my view because I wanted something in between the deluxe plan and the regular Disney dining plan. So I filmed this video a while ago and I sat down to edit it and lo and behold Disney has since me filming this video announced and they are in fact adding a fourth tier dining plan which is like my literally perfect version of a dining plan so it comes with two credits 
uh, that you can use interchangeably just like the deluxe plan it's called the disney dining plan plus so just like the deluxe plan you can use your credits interchangeably at a quick service or a table service and if um yeah that's 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 the plus side other than that it's pretty much the same as the other dining plans and i just wanted to pop in and add this little end to the video just to let you know that disney has in fact added a fourth option um, I thought about refilming the whole video, but just decided to put this little note in at the end. Um, because that's the fun of filming Disney videos, is Disney likes to change things like that. <laughs> so, even when I think I'm getting ahead on filming some videos with some great information for you guys, Disney goes and changes things on me. <laughs> so, anyway, that's that. That's, I mean, it's literally like my perfect dining plan. Um you know I wanted something that was less credits and less food so there's no appetizer included in the table service meals that's another difference between the deluxe plan and the Disney dining plan plus um, there is no appetizer included it's just an entree and a dessert just like the regular dining plan um, but yeah like it is my perfect dining plan now exists in the world of Disney and hopefully I'll be able to take advantage of it on my next trip but you'll just have to stay tuned to for more on that um but yeah so that's i mean i don't know what else to say about it really it is everything like the regular disney dining plan again it's just that it's two credits and you can use them interchangeably at either a table service restaurant or at a uh, quick service restaurant and you still get your two snacks every day you still get your refillable mug included um and that's it. And then, like I said, the only difference between the deluxe plan is obviously it's two credits instead of three. And then you don't get an appetizer with your table service meals. It's just an entree and a dessert like the regular Disney dining plan. So, I just like I said, I just want to let you know that there is now a fourth option. And I think it is probably the best option. I think it's really great, especially if you travel solo. Or if you're like me, who likes the flexibility of just being able to do whatever you want to do. Um and basically figure that out so that's that's that that's that's all i have to say about that so again i'm just going to end the video again so thank you so much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and comment down below and have a disney day